I try to remember how this one even crossed my path initially. Did, did one of you suggest that I watch and review this movie? Anyhow, I was just perusing Amazon. I came across, I was like, oh, that sounds familiar. And I read the premise. Here's the premise. And this is Amazon's description of the movie. To save his declining business, Chris Kringle, Mel Gibson, also known as Santa Claus, is forced into a partnership with the military. Meanwhile, a precarious 12-year-old hires a hitman to kill Santa after receiving a lump of coal in his stocking. I don't know what I was expecting with this movie, but add Mel Gibson, military, and a hitman, so I just expected this really gruff, angry, mean Santa with guns to go crazy. It's not that. It's not that at all. Uh, but still, we're talking about, so let's get our Christmas spirit on. Fat Man. So Fat Man refers to Santa Claus, and I just read the description, so I'm not even going to do a recap. But okay, Mel Gibson plays Santa Claus in a world where Santa's, well, real and believed to be real by everybody. I mean, of course he's real in our world, kids who shouldn't be watching my videos, but apparently do. But from the get-go, this guy's selling this baseball bat to Walton Goggins, and it says something like, made in Santa's workshop, and they're both like, yeah, this is worth about 900 to 1,000 bucks. Because Santa's real and we all kind of know it. But the world is interesting in that sense, because it kind of breaks down the whole machine, the financial machine that Santa is. As Santa says in this movie, he's the biggest stimulus that America has. There's a lot of revenue generated from Christmas. But his business is declining and he's scared of losing it because the government's like, well, the money we give you is based on how many presents go out and kids are just shittier now. So more coal is going out than presents. So he gets less money and so he has to make cuts. I thought that was actually pretty fascinating to be honest with you. I don't know, I just, I dug that. I dig it when a movie has something that we all kind of take for granted. Like, how does Santa get funding? <laughs> how is he able to make all these toys? What's his production? And in the end, it has something like this that explains it, but also explains that, yeah, Santa can fall on hard times. So what can I say? I like that. Also, I really like Mel Gibson as Santa Claus. I mean, Walton Goggins is our hitman and he's exactly what you need a hitman in this premise to be. He's kind of a weird guy with some quirks, but hitman quirks. Like he has his little hamster with him and he carries his hamster everywhere. It's like, it's like someone read a comic book and was like, oh, hitman, they need a thing. You know, he needs a little pet or something that he has with him that he really cares for, but he kills human beings and perfect. So he works, but Mel Gibson, I thought he was really good. Again, I thought it was gonna be this like weird cartoony Santa Claus version, some hardcore Santa that was just completely unbelievable. And they're just like, suspend disbelief. We're here for fun. But the movie actually had a bit of heart and it's brought by Santa and Mrs. Claus. I'll get to her in a second. And you really feel for the guy. I mean, Santa's depressed because the world is depressing and it's getting worse. So he feels like he failed the world and he feels like he failed children everywhere. His business has fallen on hard times. <laughs> There's a scene where he's addressing all the elves in the workshop and he's talking about, okay, we're gonna help the military make weapons just, you know, to pay the bills and keep the lights on. And when he's talking, his eyes are glazing up and he's doing that old man, you know, like, this isn't what we wanted, but we're gonna get through it. Also, Marianne John baptiste is amazing as Mrs. Claus. She is the rock behind this guy. She is the one keeping him together. She always has the things to say, the speeches to lift him up. I mean, she probably doesn't believe half of it, but it's what he has to hear. I thought Mel Gibson brought the sadness and sorrow, but she brought the heart. I dug the small budget too. There are a couple times where the budget totally shows, and that would usually be one of those things that takes me out of it, and it did kind of take me out of it. Enough for me to notice and address, but then enough for me to appreciate the more I thought about it, the more I pondered it. I mean, we live in a world where usually a Santa Claus movie like this, I mean, the workshop would be enormous. You'd see Santa's castle, but really it's this humble house with this factory that doesn't look like it can produce all these toys going out there. I know I just said, well, less toys are going out. Still, you never see the sleigh fly. He, he drives a red truck. And all of that's probably because it's like, yeah, budget, dude. 
We can't make this too expensive. And I appreciated that. It's relying more on imagination than visual effects. The movie could have done better with its time management. It spends a lot of time building up this little kid who's clearly a little psychopath whose sole purpose in the movie is to get a lump of coal for Christmas because he's a shithead. And then he hires the hitman to go after Santa and now we're kind of on to the hitman. So ironing out that time management, maybe you didn't need a little kid to hire the hitman. The hitman obviously hates Santa for his own reasons. So you could have just had the hitman who was once a kid now go after Santa. But the point is, the movie probably could have been 10 minutes shorter or so. You do get a pretty cool confrontation at the end of this movie, so I'm not gonna say, oh, it's totally just about Santa being in a rut, but that whole Santa, Mrs. Claus being in a rut dynamic with their business, it's the thing that really hooked me. Even Santa's caught up in the hurricane of 2020 and you just, you feel for it. We're all just trying to make it to the end. Again, don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting to say Fat Man is a good time. No alcohol required. All right, so Fat Man, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's an obscure Christmas movie that maybe not a lot of people know about? I mean, everyone knows Christmas Vacation, Christmas Story. We know those. What's one where you're like, oh, I like this one. Not a lot of people do. Everyone likes Prancer or whatever it may be, but whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. One Magic Christmas with Gideon the Angel. I know, you're going for that comment section.